So I, I wanted to, to turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 12, and we're going to start with verse uh, 22, and so that's Luke chapter 12, verse 22, and uh, I'm going to start us off, while you're turning there, I'm going to start us off with something I, I read today that was really interesting that, that kind of fit my message, so I thought I'd share it with you. But this guy wrote an article the other day about the long lines for vaccination, they were using the long lines for vaccination, and how he was going to draw a parallel to that, to something we've all had to deal with before. But, uh, the, you know, you, you might have seen pictures of people lined up for long periods of time to get vaccinated, or you might see pictures of people with waiting long lines, you know, for distributions or things like that. And, um, and he, he wanted to draw a parallel between that and the way people act in the airport <laughs> and the airplanes. How many of you have been on an airplane, so when the airplane pulls into the gate and it's time to go, everybody jumps up from the back and rushes up to the front. You're sitting there going like, and they're all jammed in there, and the plane has barely even got there, and people are jammed up, and they're like this. They're like totally like this, and some are half falling over, and everybody's trying to get their stuff out. And, and it's like, it's a thing in our society. It's a thing on, this, on our society where the plane is going, you know, you're going to get off. And so this person was saying how they just love, like, sitting in the, towards the back of the plane, and when the plane pulls up, they're like, I'm going to wait until everybody's kind of out of here, and then I'm just going to go. <laughs> I'm just, why, why the rush? Why the rush, the push against the doors, against everybody's trying to go, and they're trying to get something? And um, it's the same thing. There's like this push, 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 and they were kind of comparing it for the push, 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 hurry up, hurry up, get the vaccine, get the vaccine, hurry up, get the vaccine, get in long lines, wait, push, push, worry, 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 you got to get it. You know what I mean? This kind of anxiousness and this kind of stress. And, you know, um, and we, you know, the thing with, with Marianne, we've got to like, we don't, we can't play that. You know what I mean? Because so we just kind of stay there and sometimes... Uh, we'll book us in a place, and we'll, we will be in the back of the plane. I sort of like the back of the plane. Jan, yes. yes. Now they want you to stay seated in the seat until the person in the seat in front of you gets six feet down the aisle. Oh, so now you're social distancing. Oh, wow. That's great. So now you got to count the feet between you and the person. You, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, so that's good in that way. You're not all crammed together falling off each other. The thing that, that this illustrates that I'd like this to begin with is this, is this attitude in our society that we have that I don't think in some ways we don't even realize just how much we walk in an atmosphere of anxiety and worry and stress. I mean, Birgit's approach to that whole situation was a non-stress thing. So instead of saying, I'm just going to get my, you know what I mean? I'm going to get my way. I'm going to really talk to him. No, she's like, I'm just going to be sweet to him. I'm just going to be kind to them. And it's, you see, so that is a kingdom way of doing things. So today, I just really, I really want to talk about this. I want to talk to you about God's answer to anxiety. God's answer to stress. And ways to identify to identify how we walk in anxiousness without even knowing it, where we worry without even thinking about it. We just, because we are so surrounded by anxiety. I mean, our news is geared to get you anxious about something happening half a world away. And what are you going to do about it? Pray, maybe. You can pray. But as far as anything else you can do, Nothing. So you're constantly assaulted, constantly shown uh, this, this pressure of environment, of anxiousness that would just try to stress you out all the time because if you walk in anxiety, you're not walking in the peace of God. You are not walking in the kingdom. It's the bottom line. So Jesus had to talk to his disciples about it. Look at verse 22. 
Jesus had to talk to his disciples. He had to specifically speak to them because, look, we're here to see people's lives change, right? So what happens? They come to you all stressed out. Oh, you got to fix this, Pastor. Oh, Pastor Ronnie, I just, this isn't working here. This ain't happening. Please pray. And then, like, how can you pray when you're full of worry? How? You can't. You can't. And so you go to a prayer meeting and somebody prays for somebody and like 25 gazillion people pray long prayers. Why? They're not praying in faith. They just feel like that. I'm just going to throw up every kind of prayer I can think of and hope that something sh- sticks. Okay? It's like shotgun prayers or mud on the wall prayers. You pray that something is going to work. So you just pray every kind of prayer you can think of. I've been in prayer meetings like that. Okay? And many years ago in particular, and they were very serious situations, but I felt like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? So we, we, there are just a lot of practical areas. So he had to say this to his disciples. Everybody say disciples. disciples. Do not be anxious. To his disciples, to his people. Why? Because we know the answer. Jesus. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. All right? So we can't be anxious because we're thinking, wow, if I just do something this or do something that, somehow I'm going to be the answer. Right? But you can't be anxious about it. That's a trap. Okay, don't be anxious about your life. Now, that word life there is soul. It's your soul. It is your mind, will, and emotions. So it's not just your anxiety about being alive, though that's important. It is the anxiety of your mind and will and emotions, all that you think, that you feel, that you want. You cannot live in a state of anxiety in your soul. You can't be guided by your flesh. What you will eat. So what you eat is what you take in. So what are you taking in that's affecting your soul? What are you taking in that's affecting your soul? Nor about your body, what you put on. So your body now is referring to what's on the outside, and your soul is what you eat, is what you put on the inside. Everybody say inside. God doesn't want you to be anxious about what goes on the inside, and he doesn't want you to be anxious about what is on the inside outside as well. Now, there are times when we have to go somewhere and we want to dress appropriately. (laughs) I was just talking to Kenny before the service and I was like, yes, we can wear shorts now. Praise God. I can get out there in shorts and a t-shirt. And Kenny goes, yeah, the other day was like a no shirt day. Come on. That is a day when it's so hot, you don't want to wear a shirt at all. Okay. But here what I'm saying is that that you want to dress appropriate to the weather. Of course, that's the very basic way of addressing. But then if you're going to go to somebody's house or if you're going to go to a particular occasion or you're going to hang out with a certain group of people, you know, sometimes you have to wear some clothes that matter that to the occasion. So there are there's anxiety about what you're going to wear. There's anxiety that our world is full of what you're going to wear. I mean, you have to worry about what you're going to wear. You want to make sure you wear the right colors or the right things or the right, you know, the right occasion. Do you have a shirt with a collar or no collar? And then you got to wonder, is this, you know, and I gave up a while ago of trying to be, you know, current with whatever pastor fashion there is because it does change. It used to be suit and tie, period, period. Suit and tie. That was it. Now, who knows what it is? You know what I'm saying? Uh, don't even try to tell me because I've just like, I've given up on that. But at the same time, God cares about what you're putting on the inside. He also cares about what's on the outside and how you dress and what's on the outside more than just the way you dress, but your attitude, what you're showing, the kind of thing that's there. You know, not just that. And, you know, it's, it's, it is interesting that, that people that get overly anxious can get really caught up in food. 
really. I mean, there are times we've ministered to people and they are so, I almost want to say fanatical about what they put in their body. I mean fanatical to the point where they worry about it. It's almost like you want to fine tune it, like you're trying to put a rocket ship on the moon. He said, your soul is more than food and your body is more than clothing. Verse 23, consider the ravens. They neither, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse or barn, yet God feeds them. God feeds them. This is a powerful word. I want to tell you something. Jesus, I believe he spoke of the blackbird or the raven because it showed up in another part of the scripture. When do you see a blackbird feeding somebody? Elijah. Elijah. Where was he? By the brook Kidron in the wilderness, but by the brook. Why was he there? What was he feeling at the time? He was hiding from who? That Jezebel. <laughs> that demon Jezebel. Was he feeling good at the time? No. He was very anxious for his life, wasn't he? He was fearful. He ran. He ran. Because Jezebel put a hit on him. She put a hit on him and he took off and he ended up there and he had nothing to eat. He was in the middle of the wilderness. He had nothing except God. He had nobody but God. That's all he needed. And God sent a raven to feed him and to take care of him, to take care of him. And you know what? He stayed there until God told him it was time to go. And he did it by drying up the brook. He knew it was his season was over. His season was over. God knows how to take care of you. If he took care of Elijah and Jesus said, look at the ravens, they don't work out in the field. They don't plant the garden. This is planting season. They don't get out there and work hard and repay. I've never, re I've never harvested hay, but anybody I know to have talked to said that's one of the hardest, hottest jobs you've ever done in your life. Kenny, have you ever done it? I've never done it, but everybody I've talked to is hard. Backbreaking work, and you're, it's hot, 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 hot when you do it because you want the hay to be dry, and you, you know, and you want it to be that way. So, but they don't sow, uh, sow, they don't reap, they don't have a storehouse or a barn. They have nothing to store their food for the future. We have our basement and our freezer and our cabinets, and we we learned last year. You better keep some extra stuff around because you may not have anything to use in the bathroom. Why? The devil wants you anxious. And when the devil has you anxious, you do stupid stuff. And you don't buy stuff you don't really need. And you worry, worry, worry and go to the store. That's what they want. Waiting in line for toilet paper. People waited in line for that stuff. Crazy, crazy, crazy. He said, how much more value are you than the birds? So how much more are you important? That is one of the root causes of worry. You just don't know how much God loves you. And we need to walk in a greater level of love in order to worry less. Right? So how many, I want you to look at verse 25 because I'm using the ESV version, but I, I want to recall more of the, uh, the other versions that use this translation. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single, now that word there is cubit or measurement to his span of life. Which one of you can be greater in stature? It's not so much how long you're living, 
It's how much stature you have or how much, uh, it literally means, let me see, let me get it to you. A single cubit to his stature. How tall you are, how presentable you are, how you show and how you look to everybody else. He says, look at the lilies. Verse 27, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. And, you know, and the thing is, you want to be able to tell, like, like if you understand the, 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 this thing about anxiety, you want to be able to tell other pastors that the church is doing well. <laughs> you want to tell the other pastors that God's doing this miracle and that miracle and that fantastic thing and this fantastic. You know, because... And then in church cultures, it always seems to be about your building and how many people go to your church on Sunday. It doesn't say who's in your church. You can have 2,800 mules in your church, stubborn people. A friend of mine says, I'd rather have my church with just a handful of God's people than a bunch of Egyptians. <laughs> that was his way of putting it. And so, I mean, I get it. But even though I knew that in my head, I still had that attitude. You know what I'm saying? My, God was dealing with my attitude, my spirit, about trying to add a cubit to my stature. And that's where you, this idea of how people see you on the outside. Not so much what you're taking up on the inside. That's their food that God will provide for you. But also, God cares about what you think about how other people see you. Right? What you think about how you come off to folks. And many times, man's setbacks are God's advancements. Many things that look like a setback to you is actually something that's pushing you into God's will, into God's purpose, into God's plan for your life. Because it's, he's setting you up for, for victory if you continue to walk in obedience to what the Lord says. And I think it's appropriate that today is, you know, one of the most beautiful things about this area is spring. Amen. This is the second phase of spring. We had an amazing first phase of spring with the bulbs coming out and the magnolias have been, the tulip uh, magnolias have been amazing. This is like the most beautiful year. I've never seen it last so long and so beautiful. I mean, how can you match that? How can you match that? I mean, if, if I went to Mary Ann and I said, honey, I, I really think that I'm just going to give you plastic flowers because man can just make it so much prettier than God. So I'm not going to give you plastic flowers. What would she do with that vase? Probably hit me with it. Right? No, she doesn't do it. She's not violent. But she'd give me the look like she could. You know, there, see, there's the look. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? God knows how to make things beautiful. How many of you have seen this, the row of redbud trees as we're coming up the, to the road? It's beautiful. So God knows how to present you beautiful to other people. He knows how to make, make you beautiful. And he knows how to present you before other people. So don't look out for yourself. He says, the nations in the world, in verse 30, seek after these things. And your father knows that you need him. Instead, seek the kingdom. And these things will be added to you. See, Elijah went to the wilderness first, and then God said, okay, I'm going to feed you. Fear not, little flock, for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom Sell your possessions, give to the needy, provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with treasure in heaven that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Can we all say that together? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There it is. The treasure. The treasure is your heart. It's in your heart. The armor of God, the armor of God, take up the whole.